All right, yeah, I've got a mustache. I understand. It's November though, November 30th when I'm recording this. So maybe next time it might be here, maybe I'll shave it off, I'm not sure. And I say mustache, mustache, not mustache. I don't know what I said. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at a vintage inspired diver. Maybe an homage to an Omega Seamaster. It's the Ingersoll Scoville, specifically the I-05005. Maybe I recommend it, maybe I don't, I don't know. But I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera so we get a closer look at it. So here's a closer look at the Ingersoll Scoville. Uh, the model number on this one is I-05005. Now they make a bronze version, they make um, some on leather straps. This one is on a stainless steel bracelet. So let's get into the dimensions here. Uh, diameter of the watch is 43.1 millimeters. The lug to lug is 51.2. Now they do have these protruding links here. Uh, if you look at it like sideways there. So if you measure that distance, it is 56.2. Uh, the lug width is 22 millimeters and the thickness is 14.8 millimeters. Now a lot of that thickness is coming from that dome piece of uh, mineral crystal. So it's about two millimeters um, above the bezel there. And it weighs in at about 167 grams. So if this watch does look familiar, um, this definitely is playing an homage to the Omega Seamaster 300 the vintage diver here. Now it's not gonna have the same ratings. This is only 100 meters of water resistance. And obviously the build quality is not gonna be the same as an Omega, but you're gonna get it for about three, five percent of the cost of an Omega. Uh, this watch I got for about $110. So now put that into consideration um, whenever you're pricing this thing out. Um, you're not gonna get, like I said, you're not gonna get that Omega quality, but it's definitely a good price if you want to get something uh, vintage inspired diver. So like I said, the glass is mineral crystal. And uh, like I said, it is 100 meters of water resistance. The case and pretty much the entirety of the watch is brushed. The only polished parts right here are the uh, beveled ends here on the side. Brush on the side there. It has a nice coin edge um, bezel right there. Now, the bezel is kind of weird. I didn't expect this. It's only a 90 click bezel. So there is slight back play, if you can see that right there. Um, like I said, the cost of the watch, you know, I have to take that into consideration, but overall, not too bad. I'm not going to be using this as a dive watch anyways. Um, the bezel is just there for aesthetic, but everything lines up pretty nicely. The chapter ring on the inside also lines up pretty nicely around the entire watch. Now moving down the clasp, we have a 22 millimeter lug width at the top here, and it tapers down to 20 millimeters at the clasp. Now this does come with the butterfly clasp, but if you're not a fan of that, um, just keep that in mind. And the buttons on the side are very touchy. And I don't know if it's how much they protrude out or what it is, but I mean, you barely touch it. And um, this clasp is flying open. I've actually had it come off on me a couple of times. I'm just playing darts, you know, just I know I have like a fat wrist, but it, it, very touchy. And I didn't like that. I actually bought a uh, Tropic rubber strap, and I'll be putting it on here in a minute, uh, just to show you how much of a strap monster this watch is. But yeah, just keep that in mind whenever you're gonna buy um, this specific model. Like I said, there are models that come with a leather strap. So if you're interested in that, you could go ahead and buy that one. So this watch does come with a Miyota 821A movement. And this is the first Miyota I've ever owned. And it could be a little finicky. If you look at the seconds here, it might stutter when it gets close to the three and four o'clock. Yeah, like right there, it seems like it, it got stuck a little bit. Um, now it is a, a more affordable movement. So 
I guess let's take a look at the crown settings here. So it does come with a threaded crown. Solid pop out. In the first position, you're gonna be able to change the date. There we go. And then the second position, the watch hex. Let's go ahead and uh, show you how nice that looks. I mean, it's very smooth. So let's go ahead and put it to a better time here. Pushes in nice, and in this position, you can actually manually wind it. Now, it does feel a little gritty when you're winding it up. All right, getting up close and personal with the dial. On the website, it states that it's black, but I don't think so. If you compare it to the date wheel, the date wheel is definitely black, but the dial itself is more of a matte gray. Um, even though you can see on the bezel itself, the bezel is black. So it's kind of like a weird color combo. It actually looks like your watch is fogged up at times. Um, that's just like a little gripe there. The indices are, I don't know if it's rose gold or bronze. And all of the lettering, printed lettering, and the chapter ring is painted in that same bronzish rose gold color. As far as the indices go, at the 12 o'clock, you see that big triangle marker and baton styles all the way around. Double wide batons at the six and nine and a half baton at the three o'clock next to the date window. The handset on this watch is very nice as well. You have that big, broad arrow hand for the hour marker, a nice sword style minute hand and a lollipop seconds hand. Now looking at the lumen, I'm not sure if it's gonna show up on video, the hands and the indices do have a greenish tinge to it, and I'm not sure if that's um, done on purpose or not. For those of you who don't know, Ingersoll made the first glow-in-the-dark watch with its radio light um, luminescence. So maybe it's paying an homage to that. Uh, I don't really know. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but yeah, it just is a little bit different. On the back of the watch, the Ingersoll comes with an exhibition case back showing off that Miyota 821A movement. Um, taking a closer look, you can see the writing on the back side, 100 meters of water resist, the model of the watch, and it is made out of 316L steel. Now this is the first Miyota I've ever bought, so I was actually quite surprised on the finishing of the watch, and it does come with a custom Ingersoll rotor. Um, as you can see there, it says tw Ingersoll 21 Joule and automatic on that rotor. I was very surprised when it came to this. All right, so let me go ahead and pop this on the wrist. I'm gonna take off my Ianos Avisos. Nice little diver here, 300 meter diver. Gotta do a video on this soon, so let me go ahead and take this off real quick. And here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. Now, it fits and it looks pretty good. But like I said, I much prefer it on the Tropic strap. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on the wrist real quick. And here it is on the Tropic strap. Now, I much prefer a bracelet on my watches but with this watch, I actually prefer the rubber strap. Now, it does solve the issue with the butterfly clasp. So it's like a win-win situation. But let me go ahead and flip the camera and I'll give you guys my pros, cons, and final opinions. And there it is, the Ingersoll Scoville. Now, I've gotta be honest, at first, I did not like the watch. I wore it a few times. I put it back in the box. I was really disappointed until I put it on the Tropic strap, which brings me into my pros. I'm gonna start off with the pros. 
Ingersoll has a very rich history. They've been making watches since 1892. Now, they've been bought and sold a few times, and right now, I don't know if they're considered a mushroom brand, um, but the history of the company is really cool. I'm actually probably gonna do a video on it. So that's number one, it has, comes with a rich history. Number two, it is a very good homage to the Seamaster. Now, if you don't wanna spend the $7,000 on Omega Seamaster 300, you could spend a couple hundred bucks on a Scoville, and, I mean, at a glance, they look pretty similar. You're going to get a fun, vintage-inspired diver, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all. And you could pick them up relatively cheap. I mean, you could get this watch for sub $200 on eBay. Uh, what is that, 3% of an Omega Seamaster? That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And this thing is a strap monster. Like I said before, I didn't like the bracelet at all. Uh, but putting it on the Tropic strap breathed new life into it, and it, it, it just works. It works a lot. It can work on a NATO strap. Pretty much anything that you want. And I guess that could lead straight into the cons. The bracelet, very underwhelming. Um, very flimsy. The clasp itself is very touchy. Uh, I just reviewed that Bull of a Lunar Pilot and that, brace, that bracelet and that butterfly clasp, night and day compared to this. So that's number one con. Number two, the bezel itself, it has back play. It's a 90 click, which is a little odd, but whatever. The biggest gripe is the coin edge on the side. It's very shallow and it's kind of hard to turn, especially if your hands are a little wet. Um, I can see it being hard to turn if you do get some grime or something underneath um, the bezel itself. And the last grab I have is the movement inside. Uh, this is the first Miyota I've ever owned, so I wasn't sure what to expect. Now the second hand jitters a bit, and the hands kind of get a little wonky sometimes. And I don't know if that's just a Miyota thing or what it is. It's just not as crisp as I would expect, um, especially with owning a couple of Swiss made watches, and I know I'm not going to compare those two, but I, w I set the bar a little too high, and my expectations didn't, you know, they didn't meet my expectations at all. So that's one thing. Now, with that being said, if you're looking for an entry level automatic watch or an homage to the Seamaster, I would definitely pick this up. It's definitely worth it. Um, like I said, change out the bracelet, and he'll be good. So Thanks guys for watching. Subscribe, like, let me know if you ever if you ever owned an Ingersoll, and if so, which one is your favorite, or if you like this watch, or if you could recommend any other homages, I would definitely appreciate it. So, and the last thing, my buddy Luke said that we're in a collab on some sort of video. I don't know, some maybe some watch thing. He's getting into watches now. Let me know what you want to do. Do you want to mod some watches? Let me know, Luke. I'm going to pop up a couple of videos here. Here's Luke's video, and here's my, I don't know, my latest unboxing. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.